Another question people ask about alpha-gal syndrome relates to the, the avoidance diet and what's appropriate, what's not. Certainly, one of the early things that, that I look for is to make sure that patients feel better on the correct avoidance diet, meaning they're not eating mammalian meat. And for some of them, it stops there. Others have to avoid dairy and cow's milk in all its uh, forms. And still others have to avoid gelatin and additional alpha-gal related exposures. But initially, we look for improvement in clinical symptoms when patients remove red meat from their diet. If we're not seeing that improvement, it makes me question the diagnosis. And usually this happens within the first two to three weeks. If they are not, if they have not removed dairy, then I will ask them to remove dairy and monitor for improvement in their clinical symptoms. If there's still no improvement in their clinical symptoms, then I really question whether we in fact have the correct diagnosis. I would also add that dairy tolerance seems quite variable. Some patients tolerate dairy the entire time they have alpha-gal syndrome, others do not. Some patients tolerate dairy initially and over time, presumably with additional tick bites, they seem to lose tolerance to dairy. So it can be quite variable. I don't usually pull it out of the diet unless they are symptomatic to dairy exposure. Natural flavors, I think bears mentioning because many food producers can include this phrase natural flavors, which can often mean that there's some beef or pork or lamb uh, additive, whether it's uh, some concentrate or fat that's added for flavor. Be wary of natural flavors if patients are having continued symptoms and feel as though they are eating a, an appropriate avoidance diet, we often will ask them to examine their foods, particularly packaged foods for that phrase, natural flavors, may even be worth calling uh, the patients, calling manufacturers to know. And finally, when it comes to the avoidance diet, just know that there are some exposures that seem to be beyond mammal. So we focus a lot on alpha-gal distribution in lower mammals, but there, probably are alpha-gal epitopes in most forms of carrageenan, which is an algae. And there are some reports out of Japan in particular of uh, certain species of fish roe that seem to have alpha-gal related epitopes as well. So if a patient um, reports a, a reaction while they're eating a, an appropriate avoidance diet and they, they have a sense of what they're doing, then sometimes we think about these beyond mammal exposures and ask for that as well.